Follow the money, folks. When you follow the money, it will lead you to where all the wealth is going. And over the past 50, 60 years, the incentives of the, the economy has created a shareholder economy uh, where a majority of the new wealth being created has been funneled to the top 1%, um, who are merely shareholders that just own stakes in the largest businesses in the U.S., and this film made by Jamie Johnson, who is the heir to the Johnson family, um, is called Born Rich. And it features um, his friends who are all descendants of billionaires. And the film begins with his 21st birthday party. Um, where all the attendees are the, ch the kids of billionaires. And for whatever reason, he wanted to make this documentary about him inheriting his family's wealth on his 21st birthday. Um, and the title of the documentary is called Born Rich. Um, it's free on YouTube. Um, and you can also uh, buy it to rent online, um, but it is free on YouTube. The quality is just lesser. Um, and the creator is Jamie Johnson, the heir of the Johnson & Johnson um, family fortune. And um, I'm not sure what compelled him to make this documentary, but it is very revealing. And it is an intimate look into the lives of the most wealthy families in America and how out of touch um, they truly are and disconnected from reality uh, their wealth has made them become. Uh, and so it begins with an interview with his lawyer who is um, discouraging him from making this documentary in 2003. Um, and some of the kids that are now grown up, but um, they're pretty much kids in this documentary, um, begins with Ivanka Trump, who did nothing but inherit her family's fortune, just as her, her father did. Um, Georgina Bloomberg, who is the daughter of Michael Bloomberg, the New York City billionaire that attempted to run for president um, merely just by trying to buy the election and buy votes. Um, S.I. Newhouse IV, um, comes from old money and has some of the most creepy body language out of all of these um, people. Luke Weil is probably the person that I hate most out of this documentary. Um, he is the heir of a, a video gaming or just a gaming industry tycoon. Um, and he is quoted to say that uh, he just got into university because of his grandfather's reputation and that he can uh, insult anyone just by saying that he can buy their family outright because he's from New York and he's rich. Cody Franchetti, who is just a, an Italian um, royalty descendant, I think, um, who is involved in the fashion world and is just obscenely rich and completely nepotistic and ignorant. Stephanie Erklentz, who is a uh, German descendant um, and highly regrets being um, ever filmed in this documentary, uh, which is hilarious. Um, she, she is a prime example of um, a billionaire who takes every step to remain out of the spotlight and tries to hide their wealth. Josiah, Josiah, Hornblower, who is actually a descendant of the Vanderbilts and the Whitney family, who are old money from New York. Um, Anderson Cooper is actually um, a Vanderbilt as well, and he has some of the most creepy body language out of all of these people interviewed. He he doesn't blink once, and the topics that he chooses to discuss are very telling um, of his character. Carlo von Zeichel, who is a German um, and Italian royalty descendant um, who is just a classic example of 
um, spoiled rich kid womanizer that um, has just always gotten whatever he wants in life. And Juliet Hartford, who thinks buying expensive real estate and mansions is a hobby and personality um, instead of um, possibly donating or volunteering. Um, and so here's a quick clip of the documentary Born Rich, um, where it begins at uh, Jamie Johnson's 21st birthday party with all of these um, billionaire kids pouring champagne and doing great Gatsby things. Kind of really displaying the, the wealth gap that we haven't seen um, anything like it for the past hundred years since the last Great Depression. This is a party for uh, one of the Johnson & Johnson family members. They are of Johnson & Johnson. You may not know that some of these people are actually Johnson family members, so treat everyone as if they are. I always expected that my 21st birthday party would be the greatest night of my life. Champagne, pretty girls. You wonder, can life get any better than this? Well, to be blunt, it can. At midnight, I'm going to inherit more money than most people could earn or spend in a lifetime. Ugh, I fucking hate this. this. You have to watch this, though. Remember. The thing is, now that it's here, I'm not really sure what to make of it all. I live in a country that everyone wants to believe is a meritocracy. It's a plutocracy. That everyone earns what they have. I guess if it makes you feel better, keep telling yourself that. It doesn't work for me anymore. I know my family gives away millions of dollars each year to charity. To avoid tax breaks. How does that exactly level the playing? Or to get tax breaks, excuse me. I mean... To avoid taxes. What did I do to earn the kind of money I'll own at midnight tonight? Nothing. All I did was inherit it. White privilege at its worst. And next is just kind of a, a clip. Back in the Occupy Wall Street protest in 2011, uh, Jamie Johnson, who created Born Rich, went down to the protests as a representative of the 1% to talk to the protests. Um, because this is kind of his thing now is to make documentaries, I guess, about the rich, even though he is obscenely rich. I re recognize who I am and what I am, so I actually am a member of the 1%. Where's the mic? Documentary filmmaker Jamie Johnson is an heir to the Johnson & Johnson pharmaceutical company Fortune. In 2007, he made a film called The 1% about affluent families and the rapidly growing wealth gap in the United States. Today in America, the disparity between the haves and have-nots is worse than it's ever been. Now the top 1% of Americans, like my family and me, own roughly 40% of the country's wealth. And we share an aggregate net worth that is greater than the net worth of the bottom 90% of individuals combined. Every year my family meets with an advisor to discuss our finances. That when you're looking and he usually says you're the same thing. We keep getting richer. And frankly, if they are in that first circle, the in fact, our family's fortune is growing faster than ever. It gives him an unusual perspective on the protests. He spoke with the Daily a few days before police moved in and cleared out the park. I don't think you can say that there isn't any purpose to camping out in Zakati Park because, in truth, they're having success. He sees their success in grabbing headlines and building momentum to raise taxes on the 1%. Well, it seems Warren Buffett has really become the point man for this or the, or the representative of the rich, and he's taking the position that his taxes should be higher. Certainly... They take the position, but nothing has been, been done since the Occupy Wall Street wealth. to increase the taxes on the most you know, wealthy. Huge debt crisis, and to Except taxes um, the legislation that was just passed in Seattle, that, um, that taxes 
the most wealthy corporations um, who escaped paying taxes through tax loopholes and Amazon didn't pay, pay any federal taxes for the year 2019, 2018. Because the whole nation then is limited if they don't have a prosperous middle class feeling like opportunities are available to them and they can start to, to really build fortunes of their own. There are people who are looking for funding for their projects that would kill to get into this meeting. That's right, absolutely, and we make sure they don't get to get in. <laughs> Characters in his documentary give the rest of us some insight into the minds of the vastly rich. Do you want to make hundreds of millions of dollars on top of what you already have? Yeah. Yes, hell yes. Are you model? That guy is so fucking scary. Actor. I'm, at, I'm just asking. Uh, no, I don't do anything. Because like greed is such a mental illness. It's just like, you know, any addiction where you just, like, you need more, you need more, you need more. But when, it, when we're talking about money, you know, that becomes a monopoly. And then you take over an entire industry and then it leaves a lot of people out to dry. I think for many people who are the incentive goes towards really is just about money. I the shareholders money and investing rather than is, is the, most important thing in the wage life. earners and when salary in a earners. Where people feel that they don't have access to jobs or, or just when people feel that there's no chance that they'll ever be able to earn a fortune themselves, which is something that's fundamentally American, you have a problem. One of um, my favorite economists is Robert Reich, who's a progressive capitalist. Um, and he talks about um, four fundamental economic policies that we could implement that could really um, help cure a lot of the economic problems that we have in this country um, regarding the ever-expanding um, wealth gap. Um, and those things are keeping interest rates low so that borrowing money from the Federal Reserve and borrowing money from the big banks is affordable for all people. Cut the military spending. Um, we're seeing that um, with protests and calls to defund and demilitarize uh, the police, which should absolutely happen. And then we should also um, defund uh, the military. Um, and the defense budget as well, and give those servicemen and women a raise, but cut the wasteful, wasteful spending and the hundreds of bases that we have around the world that we use to police the world, um, because we can no longer um, afford to do to fund a military industrial complex, and it's really quite a snake eating its own tail, um, and we should divert those funds back into our communities to then attack a lot of the root problems that are, um, that, w that were faced um, all throughout the country. Um, Congress just passed um, the new defense budget, which surpasses $700 billion for the next year. And it's exactly our military, our overinflated military budget that is increasing our debt um, burden that we also have um, that's in the in the 20 trillions um, plus um, and so to, to cure that um, to kill two birds with one stone if you will um, defunding the military and then investing in communities allocating that money back into the communities um, would help cure a lot of the economic disparity that we have so keep interest rates low defund the military uh, tax the most wealthy um, Americans and divert that money um, to those that need it most. Um, and then also quantitatively ease, aka print uh, money, um, to help bail out um, those uh, that need it most. So students that are um, overwhelmed with student loans, um, uh, credit card uh, debts, and car loan um, debts that have just absolutely... Um, gone out of control. Um, those are the sectors that need um, real bailouts. Uh, to strengthen the middle class, like Jamie Johnson says, uh, a strong middle class is really the best economic system. Um, and 
and right now what we have is a shareholder system where all the incentives and the new wealth being creative created goes towards the shareholders and um the top one percent quite frankly so here is another clip from the film um that is rather disgusting but it really exemplifies the nepotism and ignorance of the rich I, I can't so here he is meeting with his lawyer who is um, discouraging him from making the film the kinds of people you want to talk to about the kinds of things you want to talk about that they participate in the film they have to be nuts I mean you're dealing with families that Let's have see. always made it gospel that you don't let me try it again look Jamie this okay. firm we have represented your family for years for years I, I can't, I can't in good conscience recommend to the kinds of people you want to talk to about the kinds of things you want to talk about that they participate in the film. They have to be nuts. I mean, you're dealing with families that have always made it gospel that you don't talk about your money. And now you want to put them in a film that, it, um, I don't know how, you know, I'm not surprised that you're having trouble getting people. Before I say anything. I, I just want to say that I am really, really reluctant to do this, and I really don't like talking to this thing at all, and I dislike you both immensely as a result of the fact. This will make you sick. If Luke is any indication of what it's going to be like trying to get my friends to talk, then this is going to be more of an adventure than I expected. You know, I mean, I have sort of apprehensions, first of all, I, you know, about being on, you know, in a film, like, you know, about a bunch of rich kids. Like, maybe it's more than that. I understand that it represents, like, you know, a particular sort of, you know, niche that maybe, you know, most of the world doesn't really recognize, and in that way it's significant. But, you know, I, I would worry about, like, my parents seeing it, you know? I would worry about um, some of my friends seeing it. I think, you know, some of them would think that my involvement in it was inappropriate. You know, essentially just kind of the notion of talking about, you know, one's wealth, you know, describing a bunch of people's wealth, it's just kind of tacky. Yeah, I'd say so, to say the least. Opulence is extremely tacky and so, My so wasteful. The industry. They do sports and horse racing. They supply the equipment and security and everything. So they do the, you know, all the betting at Belmont and, you know, Churchill Downs is where the Kentucky Derby's held, um, you know, at the Preakness. And then they do all the hotels in Vegas or Atlantic City in terms of sports betting. It was pretty big business. My father told me at a very early age um, that I could do whatever I wanted. You can do everyone. You can be a concert violinist for all I care. As long as you do something. As long as you do something, you're going to be set up. You don't have to worry about anything. Don't do something. You know, he didn't say, at that age, I might have to cut you off. But The white privilege of its finest. It would be a low estimate, a very low estimate for me to say 20 billion. But I can't, and I can't get too exact with it. But in in uh, in attainable assets, that's what. Now that's the all their body language is just so creepy. My grandfather. The lack of blinking, the lack of empathy in their voices. My SI. I'm my father's oldest son, so I'm SI. The creepy smiles when talking about their yeah, extreme my wealth. My grandfather had bought a group of magazines under a label called Condé Nast. I don't remember what was in it originally, so I'm just going to name them all. Is that okay? I don't have enough fingers. Vogue, Allure, Vanity Fair, GQ, Self, Glamour, House and Garden, Condé Nast Traveler, Architectural Digest, Bon Appetit, Gourmet, Wired, New Yorker, and I'm sure there's a couple I missed. I'm just going to pause it there just to make a point. So his family owns all these, owns a majority of the most popular magazines um in the united states and around the world to be quite frank um and it's just such a perfect example of a monopoly unchecked you know essentially free enterprise um for one family to own all of these giant companies um and to essentially create a monopoly out of it um is just too powerful and at that point ne absolutely needs to be Check, uh, checked and balanced and, and broken up. So there needs to be more regulations in place uh, to, to prevent that. 
um, from happening. The other family you think would lay a lot of pressure on my shoulders and say, you're the oldest, you know, you're the namesake. But it doesn't work that way in my family. You've got to earn your way. If you don't go to school, at least somewhat, and if you don't work for the family and put in your time, you don't get shit. How you doing? Very good. You're looking great. It's therapeutic. You go to the shrink, you talk about yourself, and then you figure out things. Same thing, you're a tater, and you, you still talk about yourself, and you figure out other things. It's my shrink. And there are not many people like myself in uh, modeling. I, f I see and uh, had friends that really got me into it. They almost coerced me into it. They really, I kept hearing it from many sides. Try it, try it, why not try it? And uh, finally I did. Uh, Lauren, Lauren Hutton, who's a friend of mine, gave me the idea. Isabella, Rossellini once said, ah, yes, yeah, I called me out. Some other members of my family think it's... Uh, Definitely a psychopath if you're quoting Mussolini uh, proudly. Being a whore, which, uh, for a man, I think it is. I did it purposely. It's the... Uh, other end of the spectrum for me. I've always been very introspective and uh, interested in uh, culture and things like that. And this is something on the surface completely. And I, I'm purposely doing it to explore that side. No, I'm just going to stand right. Oh, yeah, Bristol Quisci. Okay. Bristol Lapels, you see, they're high. There's nothing worse when you see these jackets with these lapels that go like this. You see? Are low riding. Clinton wears this kind of thing. Have you seen? It looks like a restaurant owner. It's so vulgar. And this is so has an aristocratic thing to it, no? Well, I think no matter what I hear about my parents, about my family, no matter what I read, the fact is that I'm absolutely, you know, proud to be a Trump. And I'm, you know, like, proud of my family name and I'm proud of everything they've done and ever accomplished. My grandfather, somebody was telling me, had built more housing units than anyone else has ever done in New York. In, he was just in the other borough. Ugh. So to my dad, it was sort of... What shit genes. He wanted to go in the direction They're just all so ugly inside and out. Manhattan, so she looks completely different now with all the plastic surgery she's done. And, and he looks pride in shit. People would even take an interest in me just because I'm a part of them. So, you know, for a while I was worried that, you know, for my whole life, I'd sort of be under my parents' shadow. But it's not a bad shadow to be under, I guess. So it's okay. She inherited the wealth of her father. Her father inherited the wealth of his father. You know, talk about white privilege. These these people are just were, were born with a silver spoon in their mouth and have never felt in their entire lives. They don't even know what Top Ramen tastes like. I grew up with Top Ramen. I grew up with Frosted Cheerios, Top Ramen, and lettuce and salt. That's basically it. You know. Vanderbilts made their money in shipping and railroads. This guy's the most creepy. Is he? He never blinks. He's a descendant of the Vanderbilts, just like Anderson Cooper. Old New York money. Gertrude was a bohemian type, kind of going off to Paris and getting sculpture lessons by Rodin. And in the early 1900s, had gone downtown and, and tried to help out a struggling American artist, and in the process, formed the Whitney Museum. But everybody was a crook back then who made money. The Johnsons, right? Yeah. Terrible. They probably were like making opium or something. Or <laughs> and come to find out after I watched this documentary, uh, Born Rich, um, that Jamie Johnson actually made a sequel to it in 2007 called The 1%. 
um, that talks more about really their their parents' wealth um, rather than the the kids' ac aspect of it. Um, and so here's just um, a clip from that. It's also available on YouTube for free, and you can rent it for a better quality version. Would you feel uncomfortable? Yes, you may not do it. Get, just go play golf. Go on. Play golf? Just go play golf. You cannot film this. I'm serious. Somebody here. Yes, this is my son, Jamie. Um, hello, good to see you. Jamie Johnson, that's my dad. Am I a violation of yeah, the dress code? As long as it's white, you're fine. Well, this is so exciting. You know, I've, I don't think I've ever seen people playing croquet in all white before. Well, what do you mean? That is the uniform. <laughs> <laughs> this is for the club paper? Yes. Great. You look like a gangster. Take your glasses off. Hey, can we get closer? Well, I'm going to do my best. And then the 1% ends um, with a beautiful clip of a gentleman, a uh, taxi cab driver, explaining to Jamie Johnson that he's actually, in fact, the wealthiest person in the world because he has a family, he has friends, he has a community, and he's surrounded by people that actually love him, you know? Um, and that's the real, true wealth that these obscenely rich kids lack and it shows in their character and their personalities that are pretty soulless and so here is the final clip do you want to make hundreds of millions of dollars on top of what you already have yeah yes hell yes yeah i want to have a lot more can you tell me about that well one day i'd like to go to the moon and Look at the planet Earth and say, ah, that's part of my portfolio. My grandfather that's such an illness. The Johnson & Johnson Pharmaceutical Company. Okay, Johnson & Johnson. Big money. Yeah. Old money. Old crooked money. And that money that come out of their moonshiners and all. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> There's some truth to that, man. I know it, too, because I ain't waited to get it in the board. Man, see, the truth don't hurt you. You know, I can tell you something, and you might think I'm an idiot. My family was one of the richest families in the world, but not with money. With love, kindness, tolerance, and patience. Qualities that's worth more than money, and you can't buy that. They taught me how to love people for who they are, not what I want them to be. They, they taught me how to get along with people. They taught me to treat people the way I want to be treated. They taught me to treat each person for who they are, not clump them together because we all different in our own way. That's the richness that I was brought up with. So to recap, um, Born Rich and The 1% are both fantastic documentaries that really exemplify the ugliness of the most wealthy families in America and how they acquired their wealth um, over a hundred years, essentially, of just ownership of corporations and companies whose shares have gone up and compounded um, their wealth over time, um, really through no hard work or fault of their own. Um, and so I highly recommend watching both of these. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Um, exciting news. I have a Twitch channel that I will be debuting here very soon. Um, I'm still going to be doing the podcast, but I will be streaming on that channel as well. 
Um, so stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for another podcast. I'm also going to post all of my information and website in the description below. Uh, please go there. I have custom made designs and shirts um, and buying one of those really helps out this channel. Um, so stay tuned for another podcast and I will see you guys very soon. All right.